Hey there, it's Matt Walsh, and we are going to start our uh, home seller seminar today, all right? We do these live periodically. I'm doing this one recorded so I can just put it out there, uh, but we do do these live and on a regular basis. Let's get started. Okay, like I said, we are Academy Home Buyers, all right? We are licensed agents and investors, and you can find us at www.academyhomebuyers.com. Dot com. All right. For me, my name is Matt Walsh. I'm a licensed salesperson in Virginia. I'm an active investor in Virginia, Pennsylvania, and in Missouri now. All right. I started Academy Home Buyers with the mission to help people. Right. And we only choose to work with good people. You should do the same. Okay. So the plan for today. So this is not going to be terribly long. Um, this will be about the various ways to sell your house. So we're going to go over the differences between what agents and investors bring to the table. All right, what's our goal here? All right, by the end of this, we want you to have a solid grasp of the selling process so that you can make the best, most informed decision when the time comes to sell your home. All right, so when we're doing this live, uh, we run a chance to get a $10 gift card, usually an Amazon gift card. All right, everyone who, who attends the seminar online, by the end of the time, by the end of the seminar, we identify someone and we send them a ten dollar gift card as a thank you. Okay, so we're going to start. What is property versus real property? We're going over some legal terms here. Okay, so property is legally defined as either personal property or real property. All right, those are the big basic um, groups. Real property is real estate. Okay, so real estate is is defined legally as real property. Personal property is just about everything else all right the couches you know or your jewelry all those things that are in the house that, that's real um that's personal property the house itself the land that, that is real property okay now we're going to go over quickly some title versus deed right ownership of any property is maintained by title a chain of title all right title is simply a theor theoretical ownership though right um title is a theory it's the theory that, you know, you own something. Uh, it's represented by the deed, right? So the deed is the is the document that confirms your title, your ownership of a property. So just something to understand that those two words are different, even though they're often interchanged, okay? So what do we do uh, when we want to sell something or we want to claim our title, right? We record the deed, right? So to sell or purchase a property, one must record the transfer on the deed, all right? And that's done at the local government office, often the county clerk, all right? This process is usually done by a title company or a real estate attorney, all right? The buyer and seller come to terms. Those terms are brought to an attorney or a title company who will run title. What does running title mean, all right? Running title means uh, making sure that all of the people that have title, that have ownership to a property are identified, right? So uh, why do we do this? Who can have title? Who can have ownership of a property? A person, a company, a group of people, a group of companies, the government, right? All these people can lay claim to your title. And when you run title, when a title company or a um, real estate agency, a real estate attorney runs title, they're looking for all those people that have laid claim to your property. Because if you go to sell a piece of property and other people have claim to it, you can't sell it, right? So what can happen? You have multiple owners. How do you have multiple owners? You have an ex-spouse, children, grandchildren, any number of next of kin, right? Um, you can have liens, mechanics liens, um, undisclosed mortgages. I mean, many, many people have a second mortgage or a third mortgage or a fourth mortgage. Those are all clouds on a title. Those are all attachments. People have laid claim. So they they are entitled to the proceeds of any sale. Then you have taxes, unpaid taxes or homeowner association dues. Those are all um, people or companies or agencies or governments that can lay claim to your title, right? And lay claim to your deed. And when you go to sell, they are entitled to proceeds, right? So that's what they have to run title. So I ran into this uh, last year. So a guy called me from North Carolina. Uh, I went down there, I met him, uh, saw the house. We talked on the phone 15 or 20 times. Uh, he would call me at all hours of the day and night. He just wanted to talk. He was kind of a lonely guy. I felt bad for him. Very nice guy. We, uh, we both grew up in the Bronx, although he grew up 
many, uh, many years before me. So uh, they had a house down in North Carolina and his dad left it to him in 1969. Unfortunately, his dad left it to him and his, I think, eight or nine brothers and sisters in 1969. Well, by uh, 2021 or 2022, some of those people had died and they had kids and those kids had kids. And so now each sibling had had four to six children. So I ran to the attorney's office and I you know, said, oh, let's start the, uh, the title work because I'm going to purchase this home. And the attorney called me back the next day and was like, there are 40 to 60 people laying claim to this house or not, not laying claim, but have potential ownership or the next of kin. And it is going to cost 10 or $15,000 to track them all down all around the country and see if they're still alive. And if their kids or their grandkids um, are around so that they can get the proceeds of the sale and it killed the deal. All right. So very important, very important part is running title. Okay. So let's recap how this thing works, right? So a buyer and a uh, seller come to terms, all right, which means they agree on a sales price and or other terms, right? When it's two people or two, you know, two individuals just coming together on, we can agree on anything, right? I'm going to give you $4,000, my car, my boat, and my cow, you know, um, for the house, right? You can agree on anything. So you bring those terms, you write them down, you bring them to your title attorney, uh, title agency or your attorney, all right? And they start the work. They start the title search. The company or the attorney will conduct a title search. Very important. They do that like right out of the bat because they want to make sure that you have the right to sell this property because a buyer is not going to buy a property they can't buy. Then, very simple, we exchange money for keys. The money can come from a mortgage. The money can come from wherever. doesn't matter um, where the money comes from, from the sales stand standpoint. If the title is clean and both buyer and seller are satisfied, money exchanges hands keys exchange deal is almost done usually later that day or the next day the deed is recorded at the county so that everybody knows that you now own this property that's that the seller has sold it and the buyer has bought it so that if someone wants to now that person wants to go sell the property a week later when they run title it'll be clear that they now own this property okay so that's the it's a very Big overview uh, of this. We can go into detail on everything, but just so you know, these are the simple ways. You come to terms, attorney or title, conduct a search, change money and keys, record the deed, it's done. And so let's talk about some of the people um, and who they are, what they do, how they get paid. All right, so the basics. So we have a seller side and the buyer side, right? So who's on the seller side? Usually it's the seller, um, the seller's agent if you have it, and your attorney, which most to the time you, you you should have an attorney even if you don't have to have an attorney you should have an attorney why wouldn't you right the little bit of money you save could uh save you a lot later on then on the buyer side you should have the buyer right then the buyer's agent and the buyer's attorney they everyone should have you know an attorney on their side then uh oftentimes you have the mortgage broker then you have an inspector and the mortgage broker's attorney right so these are the people and things on the buyer side. And then at closing, you have some neutral parties. You have the title agency. Sometimes you have a, a closing attorney, which is separate from the other attorneys. And you usually have a notary. These are people, they're just they're just there to make the process go. They're not working for the buyer or the seller. And they're paid at closing usually by the proceeds from the buyer and the seller. So it comes out evenly in most cases. Like I just said, how did they get paid? The seller's agent and attorney are paid from the seller funds at closing. Right. So the the seller's agent and the seller attorney are working, knowing that they're going to get paid at closing. Right. So that's usually how that goes. The buyer's agent is actually paid from the in most cases is paid from the seller's funds at closing. So the seller hires the real estate agent to sell the home. And then that real estate agent's um, commissions are shared in most cases, not in every way, but in most cases, are shared with the buyer's agent. Therefore, the four, five, six, seven percent, whatever it is, because all commissions are negotiable um, between the seller and the uh, and the agent, whatever you pay, that is shared between the buyer and the seller agent, right? The buyer's attorney is usually, that fee is usually added to what the buyer pays for 
um, for the house. And it's just part of their purchase price, right? So, um, you know, at, at closing, you'll get the statement it used to be called the HUD one, right? And it breaks down everyone's finances. You know, the buyer is, is getting this and paying this and the seller is buying this and getting this, right? And it breaks down totals. And at the end, that closing agent, whether it's a title attorney or just a title person or the notary, you know, they're dividing up the money as it's coming in and saying the buyer gets this and the seller gets this and the buyer gets this and the seller gets this, right? So um, out of that, the money that comes in, some will pay for the house and some will pay for the, you know, attorney for the buyer's agent, uh, for the buyer's attorney. So the neutral party fees are usually split down the middle. Okay. Like I said, so if let's just say, you know, for argument's sake, it costs a hundred dollars to have that notary and uh, title agent, it costs more. All right. So $50 would be charged to the buyer. $50 would be charged to the seller. Again, that can all be negotiated. Right, that can all be negotiated, but that's how it typically works. All right, anything extra like inspectors uh, are usually paid at the time of their service outside of the closing table. So when a buyer hires an inspector, right there, they're giving them cash or a check or a credit card. They're not waiting for closing. The inspector's not waiting for closing because many times they'll inspect the house and it doesn't go to closing. They can't wait to get paid, you know, or not get paid. So any of those services, even though they might be on the on the HUD form at closing, on the closing form, it'll be stated as paid outside of closing, right? Okay, so what does a real estate license do? What is a real estate agent um, supposed to give you? Like, why am I paying these commissions? So they give you um, obedience, right? It means the agent that's working with you has to be obedient to you. They have to do what you ask and say as long as it's legal, right? They owe you loyalty which means that they are working for you and not working for someone else. They're loyal to you. These are all legal, legally binding, right? These aren't just things, these are legally binding that come with having a uh, real estate license. They owe you disclosure. That means that they have to disclose to you all things that they learn, whether they're in your benefit or not, right? Um, they have to, you know, if, if they hear something about a house, they can't sit there and say, well, I want to keep this sale. I'm not going to tell them that I heard that, you know, the foundation's great. No, they have to tell you everything. All right. They owe you confidentiality, meaning that, you know, if you go to your, your agent and you say, man, I love this house, I'd pay 10 grand over asking, you know, they have to keep that confidential, right? Even though that 10 grand over asking would help them <laughs> get their, get the sale done, right? And help them, uh, you know, get them a, a bigger commission. They have to keep that confidential. They owe that. They owe you confidentiality. They can't um, disclose any of your personal matters, your financial matters, right? And that goes even beyond the sale. Let's say you know your agent knows that you're going through a divorce and a disclose and a um, you know a bankruptcy. They keep that. They can't disclose that to anyone ever. They have to keep that confidential forever. Okay. They owe you accountability. So they have to show you what they're doing. They have to be able to explain what they're doing with your money and your services, right? They, they're accountable to you and they owe you reasonable care, right? It means they have to be decent at what they do, right? They can't just be a bumbling idiot. They owe you reasonable care. They have to be um, uh, competent in what they're doing. These are all legal. And if you, know, you, you have an agent, if an agent doesn't follow these rules, they can get into a lot of trouble and they can lose their license. These are all um, you know, legally binding guidelines by which a real estate agent is uh, is giving you, you know, is, is governing them, their, their business and it has to give you. So now I go on to the next big thing. Who sets the sales price of your home, right? The owner or the agent? What do you think? All right? Everyone gets this wrong, all right? Um, most people say the owner, the owner sets the sales price. No. <laughs> and is it the agent? No, it's the market sets the price of your home. Remember that, right? Your house is only worth what someone else will pay for it. Just like your car, just like anything else in this in this uh, free society, okay? The market sets the price of your home. An agent is only using their expertise and experience to estimate a good starting advertising sales price, right? So you and your agent can come together and set a good starting price, but the market will set the sales price. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Um, and when an agent is telling you, if, if some agent is telling you that, you know, the price should be a, but you want it to be B remember, neither of you is setting the price, but the agent is using experience to try to, um, 
get you the best price and start it right. So how does an investor like ourselves, like myself, how do we determine our price for a house, right? So we figure out the after repair value, which is basically what your home should sell for on an open market. We estimate what the market will pay for your house after it's fixed up to look like the best of the homes in your neighborhood. All right. We subtract the repairs that it's going to take us to get to that point. We subtract the selling costs that it's going to take to do all that, all the closing costs, all our attorneys, all our agents, we, we have to you know pay all those. Then we take out our holding costs. What are those? Our insurance and taxes and permit fees and all the things that go into holding a house, uh, you know, utilities, we got to pay all of those. All right. And then of course, you know, as an agent um, and an investor, it's a business. So we have to take away some profit. So we have to take a reasonable profit. And that's what our offer is. Very simple. And this is everybody. Some people, some companies use different formulas to find that and they make it muddy. This is this, I don't know, this is as unmuddy as it is. What's the house going to be worth when we're done with it? How much is it going to take us to get to that point? What are the costs associated with it from taxes to agents and attorneys and everything in between? What are the holding costs that go into that? If we have a house for six months, that's six months of taxes, six months of insurance, six months of utilities, all right? And then, well, you know, how much do we earn out of that by risking our money and our time and buying the house? And there's our offer. It's very simple, very fair, um, you know, and it's, it's a, you know, a take it or leave it type of thing, right? Um, but at least it, it's open and it's right there. There's, there's no question as to what it is. And so what are some of your options when you want to sell your home? Okay. So number one, you have a cash offer. Like we just said, this is a straight, simple offer to purchase your home with cash. It's usually the fastest and the easiest way to sell a home. Okay. Um, another thing we can do is called subject to, we take your home, um, and we purchase it subject to the existing mortgage. This is where we step into your shoes and take over your mortgage payments. I'm, I'm sure you've seen these signs everywhere. We'll take over payments. Well, that's what this is. It's extremely fast and an excellent way to avoid foreclosure. Okay. Um, I've purchased several homes. I've purchased about four or five last year using the subject to method. It works when a cash offer doesn't work and extremely fast and a good way to avoid foreclosure. Right. Another thing you can do is list with an agent. All right. The absolute most common way to sell a home anywhere is to call an agent. All right. Um, most common among people who call us, actually, they look for a, you know, they're looking for a cash offer. And in the end, they reach out to an agent. We explain to them how an agent is best. You make the most money. It takes the most time, but you make the most payment. It makes the most money. All right. So let's talk over, um, let's discuss subject two. All right. Taking over payments. All right. So subject two is good for when you owe too much money. All right. You owe so much money that you can't cover the closing costs. This happens a lot, right? The house is in such disrepair or the values have come down or you've taken out a second or third mortgage. All right. And so now you owe 350, but the house is worth maybe 360 and there's $25,000 in closing costs. Now, what do you do? All right. So we come in and we simply step into your mortgage payments, right? So you can legally sell your house, but the mortgage stays in force. Right. Um, another thing, you've, if you fall too far behind in your mortgage, a traditional sale can take terribly long. Not always, but it can. But easily 60 to 90 days is not an unreasonable time frame for a traditional sale with an agent. Well, let's just say you're three or four months behind on your mortgage. And in a place like here in Virginia, they're starting the foreclosure process. You're getting a 30 day notice, right? You don't have 60 or 90 days to sell your home. They're going to foreclose on it beforehand. If we come in with subject two, we can bring your mortgage current, step in and start making the payments. That saves you from foreclosure. It saves your credit and it's really, really fast. So it is a good option for people that uh, that need it. Uh, another one we talked about is similar to subject two, it's lease option, okay? Um, a good thing again for when you owe too much money. When you owe too much money to cover the closing costs, this can be a great option. This is when you rent your house to the buyer. 
all right, and give the buyer legal right to purchase your home at a set price. So it's very much like subject to it. You're not actually selling your home. You're doing a rental agreement. So we'll buy your home with a rental agreement with a, a, with a, a paperwork that says we will put um, your house under contract at a future date for a set price, right? So let's say that the house is worth $350,000 right now and you owe $350,000 so you can't sell it. So maybe we'll do a lease option where we'll step in and take over your mortgage payments, but you still own the property and we'll take an option to purchase the price, to purchase the house, say at $350,000 two years from now. What that does is it gives us time to build up equity by paying down your mortgage, right? And then we can close on the property later on when there is room to uh to close there's all different options but that's what i that's the, the basic difference between a lease option and a subject to all right time crunch a traditional sale can take very long right this can take literally a couple of days we're going to run title and then we just do like a rental agreement this is super 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 fast um it doesn't always work if you're far behind this is usually the better one when you are like you just you're right there and you're going to start being late soon. Maybe we'll do a lease option. If you're already behind the subject two is usually the better, um, the better option. All right. Listing with an agent, All right, You almost always 99.9% of the time make more money. All right. When you have the time, um, this process can be fast, but it's usually, um, a little bit long and it can be terribly long. You have mortgage required repairs. You have city required repairs. You have to do cleaning. You have to organize your house. All right, there are inspections, there's buyer negotiations, right? Then you got to deal with commissions, all right? Remember, all real estate commissions are negotiable and there are no standard or set fees, but um, the your agent is, an, is, a, uh, you know, is in business and they need to make a profit. You can probably expect to pay somewhere between 4 and 7% um, for the most part, all right? Some will work for more, some will work for less. It's completely negotiable, but put in your head somewhere between four and seven percent um, if you're going to hire a real estate agent. All right, then you have uh, other closing costs. Typically, um, pay the seller side closing costs. We have um, all agent co commissions, seller's attorney, property tax, transfer taxes. All right, so there are lots of. Um, Lots of costs I see over here. I put the typically pay seller sides closing costs. I wanted to, I probably have a typo. Both sides have closing costs, but the seller side closing costs are agent commissions, your seller's attorney, um, property tax, transfer tax, and any number of other little things that stick in there, right? Even with that, you still make more selling it with an agent, most likely. Let's compare a, um, a house that recently did last year in Virginia Beach. Okay, this is a real house. Uh, it was some good bones. It had been vacant for a couple of years. Um, the people were working on it and it just, they were too busy to fix it up. They were looking for some cash offers. Okay. So I gave them a cash offer of $114,000. It was a straight cash offer. The seller would receive the hunt, the full $114,000. They owed nothing on the property. Right. After talking with them and going back and forth, um, I said, well, you have time. You're not being pushed out. You own the house. You have no mortgage on it. And the problem is that you just don't have the time to put in to fix it up. Why don't you list it, right? Um, at the time I was still doing residential listings. I don't, I'm still active, but I don't do residential listings much anymore because uh, I'm focusing on the investor world, but we have partner agents um, that we deal with locally. I had listed with an agent. So we listed it for $168,000 and we took a lot of interest. Okay, let's take a look at this. Hey there, it's Matt. And I'm at one of my craziest listings ever that we just closed on. I, was, I just came from the closing now and I'm, I've come to get my keys from the key box and such. This is a house that I sold twice, all right? The first time the buyers uh, fell through the day before closing. There were a whole bunch of issues, um, but not before they started the demolition before they owned it. I'm gonna show you some pictures here. This is the stuff that they left outside. Major, major problem major major problem um one of the uh the bigger issues is that the agent was the buyer so we we, we just made it go away i got another buyer right away and uh certain things we're just gonna let bygones be bygones because there's only there's just so much involved here but we resold it let's take a look um th before 
the uh, old buyers started their reno. This place was clean. It was in bad shape, but none of this was on the floor. None of this, the, this, the renovation team that they brought in um, created a big, uh, created a big mess, right? But it was nothing that didn't have to be done anyway. So in, in the end, it, it, we kind of evened out because the whole place needed to be completely renovated. Uh, they just did a, uh, you know, a big mess and left a lot of work for other people. But we got some new buyers coming in. I can't wait to show you what this house looks like when it's done. I'm not uh, flipping it, but uh, a friend of mine is and like a partner in real estate, her team is doing it. So I'm sure I will have access to, uh, to see the work as it goes on. This is a nice little three bedroom, two bath house in Virginia Beach. It's needing a whole lot of love and pretty soon it's going to be a nice home. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's done. This is what we do. We take houses and turn them from blight back into a home that a family can enjoy. All right, I can't wait to show you what the house looks like in the near future. If you have a house that looks like this in your family, you've inherited it, you, uh, you live in it, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the house looks like, it has value to someone and I can find that value. Give me a call, 757-755-5587. Until next time, have a great day. Hey there, it's Matt, and I'm out back and forth. Craziest Broken pipes. Lawn summonses. On unauthorized work. Now, and Buyers backing out at the last time. This was this one of the worst I houses twice. I've ever had to right. deal with the first time, from, the a, buyers, um, uh, from a selling standpoint. The house was in rough shape. I've dealt with a lot of those. A whole the house wasn't the problem. It was the um, whole deal. This was one of the most nightmarish dealings I've dealt with. I'm going to show you some pictures here. Um, in the end, it finally closed at a sales price of $145,000. This deal took about 70 days to go from listing to closing. All right. Um, closing costs and agent commissions totaled about $13,000 to settle. The sellers walked away with $130,000 in their pocket, right? Remember, I offered them $114,000. After all of that, all the headaches and paying and, and all of the things that went along, they still walked away with about fifteen thousand dollars more than I could pay them as a uh, as an investor. Okay, so listing with an agent is almost almost always um, the the better option if you have time. If you don't have time, then um, then working with an uh, with an investor is then your next best choice. All right, because the alternative is dealing with nightmarish. Um, selling on your own and or foreclosure and such right so if you have any questions please put them down um below this video you know in a, in a live seminar we'll we'll stay and talk so uh, keep an eye out for the live seminars we're going to do these uh, a little more often uh, i have some partners that we're going to be working with to bring this out more often to help more people if there's anything else you want to hear about uh things i didn't cover you wish me uh you wish i would cover let me know and we'll add it in all right until next time have a great day.